If you're new to Crossworld, your first question is probably, which car should I use? Although the in-game stats give you some indicator of what they're good and bad at, they don't tell the whole story. Did you know that some vehicle types have hidden properties? And that some stats are lies? A lot of this information is scattered online, but I hadn't seen anyone compile it all in one place before. I also wanted to conduct my trademark SCIENCE to get a better understanding of the game's mechanics, and to quash the many misconceptions on how stats work. For my scientific method, I'm using the default vehicles of each of the five classes with Sonic and no gadgets. Let's dive right in. Starting with Sonic's game, Speed. This is the simplest stat. The higher it is, the bigger the number your machine hits as its maximum speed. This is easily seen in the speedometer in the bottom right corner of the screen. Here, the default speed vehicle hits 185... I don't know how the Sonic universe measures speed. Is this meant to be kilometers or miles per hour? I'll just call it units. Every vehicle fluctuates between two numbers at max speed, so I'm using the higher one. Speed hits 185, acceleration 184, handling 183, power 184, and boost 183. Plane top speeds are the same as cars, while boats are a little lower and might depend on the kind of water you're in? It's weird. Of course, rings increase this, but the relative differences between the vehicle types are the same. And all these numbers do line up with their speed stats from best to worst. But the difference between 80 speed and 35 speed is only 2-3 to three units? Surely this stat is terrible, right? It makes more of a difference than you'd think. On a straightaway where all else is equal, speed cars will eventually pull ahead, as you can see by these time trial ghosts, and that might just be enough to secure victory. And now for the stat that won't! Acceleration. This stat is simple in theory, but my science revealed something strange. It measures how quickly you reach your maximum speed. According to the stats, acceleration vehicles are best at this, followed by handling, then boost, then power, and finally speed. So I timed all of them going from zero to max and huh? Power practically tied with acceleration, despite their stat being terrible. And handling and especially boost had far worse acceleration than their stats implied. Guys, I think this stat is a lie. And there's a good reason why, but it's complicated. The TLDR is that vehicles in Crossworld have to shift gears like a car as they gain speed. And in fact, you can see this in action if you slow down this footage. Notice how the speed car gets stalled at 71 speed before it starts accelerating again? That's the car shifting from gear 1 to gear 2. During this gear shift, you are not accelerating, regardless of your stats. The stat only matters in between shifts. And this is why power accelerates so fast because they shift gears at different intervals and much faster than all other vehicle classes. Handling cars and extreme gear are the worst at shifting gears, which is why both had far lower acceleration than their stats suggest. Another TLDR is the gear shift mechanic is the reason why all vehicles flicker between two values at max speed. All this information was tested and compiled by GH Shuffle on Twitter. I'll have a link to the thread in the description. But the actual accelerations do make a degree of sense. Power vehicles are supposed to be good at shrugging off damage, while boost boards hate taking hits. And in my tests, I also found that true acceleration does affect how quickly you go back to top speed after taking a hit. But this just goes to show you that displayed stats aren't everything. 
Speaking of which, it's time for the first hidden vehicle property. It's often stated online that acceleration machines have better traction on sand and ice, the equivalent of a built-in maximum traction gadget. While this is only relevant on a couple of tracks and cross worlds, I decided to test this by having each class do donuts on sand, making sure I was holding nothing but the accelerator and right on the D-pad. As expected, speed handling and boost machines eventually slipped out of control, while acceleration maintained a consistent circle. With maximum traction, the others did similarly. So this myth is confirmed. Power, what are you doing? So I think I've found out why acceleration cars feel so weak in this game. Everything they're supposed to be good at, power does too, while providing other benefits. There's only one thing acceleration does better than power, and that's handling. This stat is the hardest to demonstrate visually, but you'll definitely notice it if you play the game. Handling affects how tightly and easily you're able to turn, with handling machines turning like an absolute dream, providing a huge advantage on the tougher courses. I used to think that alone was why they're so good in Cross Worlds, until the science revealed something surprising. Handling cars get faster while drifting. This is tied to vehicle class and not the stat. Stacking about the same handling on a speed car did not cause this. During drifts, handling cars reach the same top speeds as speed ones. This explains why they're so good in high level play, where you want to spend most of your time drifting. Also notable is that power cars get slower while drifting. All other classes keep their top speeds. But wait, there's more! While turning without drifting, speed, excel, power, and boost machines gradually lose speed. But look at handling! Turning does not slow them down at all. This, again, is tied to vehicle class and not the stats. Note that all of this only applies to land form. In plain form, all types maintain speed while drifting. While in boat mode, handling and boost machines don't lose speed while turning. Boats are weird and could be the subject of their own video. So now we know what lets you handle these curves like an expert, but what about handling other races? Power. There's a few misconceptions about this stats. Some say it determines how quickly you recover from damage, but I tested both regular item hits and spin outs, and they're remarkably consistent across all classes and power stats. A normal hit from a red boxing glove means one and a half seconds until you start accelerating again, while a spin out causes you to stay in place, constantly dropping speed for exactly one second. What power actually does is determine who gets knocked away and loses rings when two vehicles collide at full speed. Power cars also have a hidden property, though this one is thankfully explained in the manual. They don't lose rings when hitting walls, essentially having the bumper guard gadget for free. And now, the final and most misunderstood stats. Boost. There is so much misinformation about what this stat does. Even the game's official manual. There it says boost machines get longer boosts. I also hear people say the boosts are stronger. Okay, let's take the science into overdrive. I may have gone a bit Eggman here. I frame by framed every type of boost for every vehicle class and graphed the changes in top speed over time. Looking at these charts, you can clearly see boost strength and length is consistent across vehicle types. All these lines are the same basic shape, the only difference is the speed stat of each vehicle. If boost machines did boost longer or faster, you'd see longer and higher green lines, but nope. 
I even tested the same vehicle with Miku over Sonic to see if her boost was different. Still no. The boost stat does exactly one thing. It makes your drift boosts charge faster. And don't worry, this is still a very powerful effect. Here, I've timed how long it takes for each type to fully charge up to level 4. You can see a clear difference and it is consistent with boost stats. I even tried stacking 100 boost versus the regular type J Iota, and that charge is even faster. Drift boosts charge much faster in boat form, but the relative differences between boost stats remain. Debunking another misconception, the handling stat doesn't affect charge time. Here's default pink Capriolet versus one with 100 handling. Both reach level 3 at exactly the same time, and I do mean exactly. Oh, and here's every vehicle's charge times with all the fast drift charge gadgets equipped. While the exact increase in charge speed is different for each level, it's interesting that with fast charge builds, all machines reach level 4 in about the same time they normally take to reach level 3. But here's a few miscellaneous boost facts I discovered during my science. I was sick and had a lot of time on my hands. There are only three strengths of boosts. The first raises stop speed by about 10 and is used for level 1 drifts and air tricks. The second adds about 15 and is the most common. Levels 2, 3 and 4 drift boosts, levels 2 and 3 air tricks, pink and blue boost pads and regular wisps. The king wisp is the strongest boost raising speed by about 20 units, and lasting the longest of all boosts by far. The only difference between higher and lower level drift boosts besides level 1 is how long they last. Speaking of length, the invincibility for a level 4 drift lasts exactly 3 seconds if you frame by frame it, though the boost itself lasts about a second longer. Hitting multiple boost pads in a row doesn't stack. A frame by frame here shows max speed getting reset upon hitting a second one. Drift boosting into another source of boost, be it a pad or wisp item, does appear to stack though. We're free of charts now. They can't hurt us anymore. What can is going off road. Unlike other kart races, this impacts all vehicle classes equally seeming to cap your top speed at about 126 units, while instantly killing your drift if you had one. So, in summary, speed cars win by pulling ahead at the final stretch. When all else is equal, speed will always come out on top. You don't need to drift as much, but remember that your handling is still decent, making for a well-balanced build. Acceleration cars win by combining quick recovery with faster drifts than power cars, and by hoping they get buffed in a patch. Handling cars win by taking every turn as tightly as possible, and trying to stay drifting at all times. Any downtime between drifts is literally slowing you down. Power cars win through endurance and patience. Resistance to both damage and shoving means they don't mind being caught in a pack. While everyone else gets knocked around, you'll remain to pull ahead. But unlike other types, try to keep your drifts short. You do have a high boost stat so you can afford this, but you'll want to release the boost as soon as possible so you get out of your slow drift. Finally, boost machines win by taking the lead as soon as possible and spamming boosts to stay there. They hate getting hit, but if played well, they won't have to. Which one do you choose?